the next form of output we're going to look at is console output. So if you remember from a few modules ago, a console is a text-based program. If a Windows Forms program is Windows-based, this is text-based. So all you ever see is text. There's no images, there's no labels, there's no buttons or anything like that. Everything is done in pure text. So that means it also, it also means we can't use message boxes. So we need a new way of outputting onto the screen. So if we were to run this program right now, all we would get is a quick flash of a black window and it would go away. That black window is called our console and it's where all the text is going to show up. If we want that window to stay there for a minute and wait for user input or wait for us to hit enter to finish up the program, we can use a simple command called console dot read line. And what it's going to do, again it must end in a semicolon, what it's going to do is it essentially wait for us to hit the enter key before it goes away. So it is still just a black screen. It's doing nothing except for waiting there. And we know it's waiting because it's got that flashing cursor there. As soon as I click that cursor, or as soon as I click enter, it's gone. So if I want if I want to wait at the end of my code, I'm gonna make sure that console.read line is the last line of code that it executes. So I'm gonna leave some space in between there just to make sure I don't accidentally get rid of it. So how do we actually show text on a console? Well um, it works very, very similar to messagebox.show. A message box is something called an object. It's a special entity within C Sharp that has two things about it. It's got a set of attributes, which are very similar to properties. It's just data about that object. And then it's got behaviors, actions that it can do. So a message box can show. An the object that we're going to use right now is the console object that black screen that you see. So if I click the dot, all of the attributes or properties and all of the behaviors or actions that it can perform will show up here. And I don't want to read a line. I want to write a line. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to write one line of text to the console. So it works just like messagebox.show. This is an action. So for our actions, we use brackets and whatever goes in those brackets is what's needed to do that action in this case I need the text that I want to show in the right line so I'm just gonna say hello world now if we run our program we see hello world and it's waiting for us to hit enter before it executes before it exits now you can see that it's pretty much identical to messagebox.show. No differences whatsoever. The difference here, is, the only difference, sorry, I guess, is that instead of message box, we have the word console, so it's a different object. And instead of show, the action we're going to use is write line. Now, consoles have a few more thing, can do a few more things that Windows Form cannot. The problem with the Windows Form, um, both the label and the message box require text to be output. And what I mean by text, I mean something inside quotation marks. All right, so um, if I do uh, label message dot show, or sorry, dot text equals seven, I'm going to get an error message because the seven is not text. However, if I put that seven in quotation marks, it will output the number seven on the screen. It's very important to realize, so it must be text to be output. However, in a console program, we can actually do all sorts of things. We can actually do equations and anything else we want in here. So, for example, I could do something like this, 3 plus 5. And what I'm going to get on the screen is the result, which is 8. This is pretty handy. I can actually combine things, too. So maybe I want to create a whole equation with the result. So I could say 3 plus 5 equals and then I can essentially add to that. Now I gotta be careful with the way my brackets are set up because it needs to understand what needs to be done together and what is separate. So the plus sign has a double meaning here. When the plus sign is surrounded by two numbers, it's actually gonna do the math. However, when the plus sign has text to one of the sides, what it's gonna do is it's gonna convert whatever this number is here to text and add that text to the end of the previous text. When we say add, there's a special term for that. It means concatenate. Concatenate is the term we use 
when two pieces of text are added from end to end. So when we run this code, what we're going to get is the text 3 plus 5 equals, and then we're going to add to that the result of the expression 3 plus 5. So we should, in theory, get 3 plus 5 equals 8. And we do. Nicely formatted. Now, there's a few other quick little things that we can do. Let's go back to just straight up text. Let's put our hello world back in here. And what we can do is there's a few special characters we can use. These characters are called escape characters. And essentially what they do is they allow us to add special things within the text. So for example, instead of putting a space there, I could put a slash T. These two characters together is what's called an escape sequence. So the escape sequence is a tab in this case. Slash T stands for tab. So if I run the program, we should get hello tab world, which we do. There's another one, which is a slash N. So if we run this, N stands for new line. So it will hello, take the cursor down to the new line, output world. We run this, we get hello, new line, world. And of course, you can combine the two. You could do, say, a slash N slash T. And when we run this, you can see that world is actually tabbed over. Close this. We can add as many of these T's as we want in there. So let's say I want three tabs. You see, we can continually align things. It helps us organize our data to do what we see fit. We could also add, of course, more lines in here as well. So we could add another new line. So you can see there's another gap in between here. Okay. So that is uh, console output. It is being able to add expressions to your output, and it's also being able to add special escape sequences. So that is output in a nutshell.